I'm Diane Resignola here in Los Angeles at REIT World 2019 May REIT's annual conference. I'm here with Douglas Kessler, President and CEO of Ashford Hospitality Trust. Hi Douglas, how are you? Great, how are you? What are some of the ways in which Ashford is looking to creatively maximize the value of its assets? It's a great question because where we are in the cycle today is a unique opportunity and I think one of the things that drives us to try to maximize value is our very high insider ownership. We have about 17% insider ownership compared to the peer average, which is about four times as much as our peers. So we're constantly looking at ways to drive value and maximize the performance of the assets. We do so with our asset management capabilities where we're looking to uh, work with uh, margins and try to improve those margins. We're also looking at it on the transaction side where we have the benefit of our relationship with our advisor, Ashford Inc., and we have a program with them that um, is called the Enhanced Return Funding Program, which allows us to access capital that they provide to us on a programmatic basis, $50 million over two years to be applied towards a half a billion dollars of new transactions. We've already utilized about 80% of that, and so that still remains outstanding for us. However, given the current share price, it's not as attractive for us to be pursuing transactions. So one of the other ways that we're trying to enhance value is by rotating out of our assets, by selling some of the weaker assets, non-strategic assets, assets that may have higher leverage but lower rev par or require a substantial amount of CapEx, selling those properties at more attractive cap rates and then buying assets at better cap rates. And we've been very successful in doing that over the past year as well. So uh, these are just a few of the, the ways that we're looking to maximize both the operating performance as well as the capital markets envelope of our company. And how does capital expenditure in 2019 compare with previous years? And what are you anticipating for 2020? Well, actually going back five years, we've been on a very aggressive capital um, expenditure campaign. And obviously hotels are a capital intensive asset. Uh, they constantly need to be refreshed. And generally hotels spend about 10 to 11 percent of revenues on capital expenditures. The past five years, we've been spending between 13 and 15 percent. And in 2019, we spent uh, excuse me, in 2018 we spent $207 million. The way that we look at this is this is potentially to provide great tailwinds to us because uh, with refreshed assets we're much more competitive, we have less disruption in our year-over-year -year comparisons, and looking ahead we would expect in 2019 to spend around $160 million, so about $50 million less than what we spent, and then going forward we expect to spend closer to historical averages. And lastly, with signs of a slowing economy, what are your broad expectations for the lodging sector in 2020? And how is Ashford itself positioned to deal with any economic fluctuations? Well, we've been a public company for 16 years. We've gone through multiple cycles. And I think we've got more tools in our toolbox in order to manage both up cycles and down cycles. And so, for example, when you think about what we've been able to accomplish and where the industry is headed in 2020, I think there's still uncertainty in terms of um, is the economy going to decelerate, heat up, or stay where it is. And I think some of the recessionary talk has been pulled back for, uh, for the economy. And so lodging is very tied to the economy, both with respect to the uh, GDP growth, uh, consumer confidence, uh, the willingness of businesses to spend, and so all of that flows through into both discretionary travel and obviously business travel. And the way that we look at it is, is that um, when you're trying to manage in the uncertainty of which way the economy is going, you have to constantly be nimble. And one of the advantages that I feel that we have is that 60% of our EBITDA is managed by an affiliate of ours. Uh, many of our peers, the majority of their hotels may be managed by a brand. Now while most of our hotels are branded, we have the benefit of them being franchised, which means that we can be more nimble with making adjustments to our um, our, our wage structure by putting in place uh, labor management saving programs. We can be more aggressive on our energy management campaigns. Anything that we can do to improve our operating margins and drive better performance to the bottom line. Similarly, we can work to try to change the guest mix segments in our hotels and be responsive to changing demand patterns to try to drive our top line performance. So, those are things that we're doing at the operational level. And then I'd say on top of it, we're clearly um, 
always looking to enhance the quality of our portfolio, which we've done through some of the recent acquisitions where we've acquired over $400 million of assets over the past year and a half or so at rev pars materially higher than our portfolio, but similarly selling assets at much lower rev par, using some of that capital to pay down debt, uh, as well as building up our cash balance. Um, we, as a percentage of our equity market cap, have a significant percentage of networking capital. Matter of fact, in our last uh, earnings report, we commented that we have approximately 100% of our equity cap in networking capital, which is a pretty significant statistic, and yet on top of it, we still have 118 hotels that have, in our opinion, a significant amount of value. So um, we're going to continue to be nimble, we're going to continue to be opportunistic, and we're going to be very assertive and aggressive in our asset management capabilities to drive better performance, either through a stagnant cycle, an up cycle, or a down cycle. Douglas, thank you so much for sitting down with us today. Thank you very much. For more from REIT World 2019, visit NAREIT's website, REIT.com.